reach out to somebody in the community who has looked a little bit sad and phone and say, Howard, you know what? I really need to get out. I need to move. Let's go for a walk. I'm Howard Feldman, and this is Smiling in the Dark. Joining me this morning is Ariel Sussman. She is a clinical social worker, both in the community space as well as in the private sector. Ariel, thank you for joining. How thank are you, you doing? Thank you for having me. All good, uh, Howard. Can you ask a social worker how you are, or is it too complicated a question? I think it's far too complicated. Yeah, I we just so. don't it's have just long like, enough. Like, where do I go with that? You, right. You'll debrief me, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the reason that we wanted to chat to you is, as somebody involved both in private and in community, you have to be, you have to have a real sense of what people are going through. And we know the result is unfortunately problematic. We see, sure. uh, we see an, an increased level of suicide in our community. We are seeing very, very difficult things. And we wanted to try and understand what is going on and how we maybe can look at some ways of upskilling ourselves mm -hmm. to, and, and reframing to be able to look at things in maybe a little bit of a more positive way. And we're not talking about positivity, which is the, the ostrich in the, in, in the sand type of Absolutely. positivity. Because it's pointless, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. And I think, Howard, I think it is important to acknowledge the deep sense of loss that our community have felt in the last two or so months. And even, I think, since October mm, the 7th, mm. we can't ignore how our community has been impacted and affected. But I definitely agree with you. It's around finding those, what I love to call, you know, when I see kids at school or people in my private practice, those little glimmers. How do we come together? How do we find that connection? How do we find that unity? How do I find that one little glimmer to make today worthwhile? It's, it's just something to hold on to, right? I think definitely something. Mm, and mm. like you said, not that ostrich in the sand, something really small that's the small ones. And I think that, unfortunately, because we're surrounded at the moment by a real narrative, I think of negativity, of a bit of desperation, mm. of sadness, that it's for each and every one of us, we do have that glimmer of hope. That's something good that I did achieve today. So I didn't need to win. Okay. So so let, let, let's let's look at that. Let's, or let's start not at the beginning, but uh, from the the ground up, maybe. Okay. What are you seeing in terms of an increase in what you've called uh, desperation, maybe isolation? Uh, what are you? How is that manifesting in what you're seeing? So I think definitely the word that comes to mind, Howard, is dysregulation. Dysregulation. I've never I even heard. Is it a real word or is it a social worker word that you've made up? It could be a social worker word. Because it actually sounds like it, that. It, 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 <laughs> if I had my thing, I'd be Googling the hell out of that word. Dysregulation. But I'm regulation. finding that okay. so many of us individually, mm. so many of us in our relationships, so with my partner, with my spouse, as a parent, I'm finding that, as you say, that foundation phase feels so dysregulated. Okay. And I think that that almost what's making that foundation not feel solid, not feel like I can stand on it and it can hold me. Yeah, so I think the word that I'm seeing so much around adults that I see in my practice, children that I'm blessed to see at school, mm. is just dysregulated. Like almost, you know, when you see the doggy paddling mm. in the swimming pool. I'm just trying to keep, keep my head, my above, head water. above water. Mm. And I think we're a lot of people just exhausted and couldn't keep So it's head. interesting because I had another image of it and it's also water related. I think of it as holding a ball underwater yes. and you're holding it and you're holding it and, and it's then, just getting tired. And then eventually and I it, think just, that's exactly it, it. it just And the analogy that I've it. used so much mm. is even that I found pre-COVID, COVID, mm. and mm. then you know, the last few years after COVID is almost if you picture us like a volcano and these little layers mm. building and building and building. And then just people now we're seeing the eruptions. 
we see right. that volcanic Okay, so explosion. we have mixed so many metaphors. I don't even know where yes. we are, but that's... Pick one but that that's resonates. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Find one, resonates for you, Absolutely. go with that. So, so we're seeing these eruptions. We're seeing these balls jumping up. We're seeing people not being able to keep their head above water. And it has been exacerbated not simply because of October the 7th and the, the community loss, but also what came prior. Absolutely. We can't ignore COVID. We can't ignore the South African situation, the, the load shedding, the infrastructure, the ANC, the corrupt. We Absolutely. can't ignore all of this coming it's all together. all of that and each layer. And then for each one of us, Howard, one area of that will impact you more right. and me less. Right. Some of it, I think, is a shared sense. So October the 7th, mm. real shared mm. sense of loss for all of us, mm. whereas for some of us, load shedding, for example, I'm blessed. I can have solar, I can have a mm. generator, mm. so I don't feel impacted and affected, whereas some people really are impacted right. and affected. Yes, yes. Okay, so we've got all of these factors. We are seeing dysregulation. We are seeing people in crisis. We are seeing an increased number of suicides in the community. And uh, whereas there's no quick answer to any of the above. How do we find what you've mentioned earlier, uh, which is those little things? And I always think of uh, when I used to do a lot more traveling, I would be going to a place and I would just not feel like going. Traveling somewhere around the world, maybe it's wherever it is, and I'm leaving my family and, and I just there was just so much going on and I didn't want to do that. I would always look for something to treat myself, whether it's a time alone to go for a walk and have a cup of coffee in a city that I've never had a, never been in, I would find something, something, something to little to say, okay, I'm going to be able to do that. And that's my treat and look forward to it as to much that. as I could Absolutely. just to try and, and, and I feel like in a way that's where we're at because we do need to look for those little things that actually bring us joy in order to maybe get rid of some of the other and dark stuff. And I think stuff. for me, Howard, that's where our hard work is. That's finding the time to introspect and say, what is it that fills my tank? What is it that charges my battery? And for some of us, we're very blessed. We know I go mm, for my mm. 10, 15, 21K run. I feel awesome. I don't know if that's blessing, but okay. For but some, for, for, yeah, okay. Apparently, well, rumor fine. has it. I'm a therapist. <laughs> no, I have okay. to tell you to no, exercise no, no, it's fine. and love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. No, no, for I'm some joking. of us, we know that it's picking up and reading a novel. Mm. For a lot of the people I see and my clientele, people don't have an idea wow, wow, wow. and that will always be my starting point almost as your homework howard go home what fills you introspect what fills you connect to what you love to do as that eight-year-old little boy what did you love to do as a 16 year old mm, mm. teen what did you love to do as a 21 year old and i find that when i can find like i said to you even the smallest thing and not commit to it straight away. I'm not running five kilometers, mm, mm. five days a week. I'm taking on that I'm going to walk around the block with a friend, with my partner, with my spouse, with my child. Or reach out to somebody in the community who has looked a little bit sad and phone and say, Howard, you know what? I really need to get out. I need to move. Let's go for a walk, even if we go around the block. Mm, and mm. I think it's finding what fills me. And often I find that what fills me has that domino effect. So I phone you and say, Howard, come, let's just go for a walk around yeah, the area. Yeah. It's actually about you, but then it becomes but about that, something that... That domino effect that yes, you're that also going to walk away mm, and feel, mm. wow, I connected. Mm. I feel good. And if you can't, I mean, are there ways to find what that is? I'm a big believer in that at the moment I feel like our head and our minds are that hamster on a wheel, you mm. know, at night when the kids have got that hamster and it doesn't mm. stop running mm. on that wheel, where we've got to take pen to paper. And there is so much power, I believe, in taking pen to paper. Well, you're not going to convince me, but yes. Yes, definitely not you. But sometimes where those thoughts, you know, are rolling mm. and I, mm. I can't make head or tails. I always say, go and make that list for you. And without even realizing, don't worry about the grammar. Don't worry about the punctuation. Don't worry about the spelling. Just write. For yourself. For yourself. Mm. 
and something will appear on that piece of paper. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible that how how we need to process. And I know that that I, I'll get myself into trouble by asking this because I'm properly addicted to these phone things. The devices. But but it doesn't help, does it? No, and especially clientele that I've really had the honor of debriefing. So moms with sons in the armies, family mm. with brothers, you know, people who know people in the army. I've said the biggest gift you can give you is that social media detox. And again, it's hard. Somebody who is addicted to something can't just stop, but it's putting in the boundaries. So for me, for example, it's been, I have not seen a single visual or listened to a single auditory. And that for me was protection of self. I could debrief you and be fully present with you without images that my mind had been filled off. So I think that's important because I think there's the sense that you have to do something. That if you're a supporter of Israel, you're a Zionist, you're a Jew, you have to watch those images. You have to listen. And how have we and contributed, actually, Howard? Actually, you don't. And I've said so to I, people, I actually made that same decision as a matter of interest. How have you contributed by went. traumatizing mm. yourself? It's, it's proper trauma. It by is not proper trauma. being functional for your family, not being present for your loved one in Israel. And I've said to anybody, if you can come and sit in front of me and say to me, this is what's benefited me. This is how I feel I've helped Israel. I've helped my people a hundred percent. I'm not there to judge, but so many have said you're a million percent right. So writing your letters to soldiers, packing boxes for yeah, devote, do what works do something without traumatizing small without yourself. traumatizing yourself and ultimately not helping the great so do we have a bit of a, a, a martyr uh, identification in that i have to feel traumatized by it i have to suffer I through think that this for some reason that almost feels what the narrative mm. to be connected has been I, I, as you're talking about it this is what so i'm thinking it makes sense yeah, it's almost been it i'm only connected if i'm traumatized if, I've watched, if i'm traumatized and seen more traumatic footage than you have or mm. heard more traumatic footage than you mm. have mm. and again if for you it serves that purpose and you walk away feeling fulfilled, which I don't understand how people could, then absolutely go ahead. And a lot of people say to me, but I can't stop. I said, then time yourself. When you wake up in the morning, get onto the device because we all have to check. Mm. Everybody's mm. okay. Everything mm. is okay. What's happened on mm. Instagram? What's happened on Snapchat? Leave it alone. You know, almost how school day's broken up into we start, then we've got break, check into your phone at break time, carry on with the lessons, check in at second break, carry on with your afternoon, mm. and not right before bed, because then the mind yeah, starts to do our mm. hamster. A little bit before, then bath, shower. Breathe. Breathe. Well, it's interesting because I'm certainly no rabbi, and I'm not advocating that people have to keep Shabbat, but it's the biggest gift but possible. It really when is I the put my gift. phone down Absolutely. at uh, six o'clock on a Friday afternoon, it is such a relief to me. Look, it's a relief to a lot of people on Twitter. When, I do. <laughs> when you have your <laughs> but, time out, they thank when, you. Yeah, it's like they can breathe you. for those 25 they hours, can, but that's not but the, the point. Truth it is, but it and really it's almost does. saying take on a little bit of that Shabbos effect mm, mm. for two hours in the day, even if it's just you setting yourself a goal to cut back a little bit. I promise you, your frame of mind yeah. resets. And that's also why exercise is a good idea and going to the gym. And because you're not bound to this, you're actually freeing yourself. Absolutely. Uh, for and a and that's why I'm that saying, time. even for people where we're financially really, really struggling mm. and that gym contract is a luxury, mm. connect to someone and walk. Absolutely. And we live in a country that we can and a beautiful place. And it's, why not do that? Okay, so final thought, because we do need to wrap it up. What message, if, if there was one message that sure. you could give to your, well, to, every, to our community? To our community. Yeah, what's that message? I think let's be mindful of our narrative. I always believe we have choice, Howard, positive or negative. Let our narrative start to be slowly, baby steps within our home, within our schools, within our communities at Shul, if that's where we are, within our book clubs, within our Kaluki clubs, positive. Uh, let's just talk a little bit more about the writing thing. It's probably a little bit 
uh, self-serving because because <laughs> you know I can't relate to the whole running things, but I can, can relate to the writing. To the writing okay. thing. So I actually was always under the impression that it actually isn't for everybody. That it's my certainly my way of processing the world. That's how I make sense of a lot of good and bad stuff. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's not only the bad stuff, and I think that's important, but. I thought it. I didn't realize that everybody will benefit from it. What happens if somebody just doesn't like to write or want? Take me through that a bit more. For me, it's a challenge to try. Okay. So I'm really struggling to sleep. Have that piece of paper and a notepad, the mm. notepad and the pen next to you. Jot down those thoughts. I'm a big believer. Then going to the bathroom and washing hands, cleansing. Oh, really? Literally tear up that piece of paper. And again, it's not about the spelling and the grammar no. and the novel. No one's reading this. Mm. This is your authentic self and your authentic thoughts. Put that on the piece of paper. Go to the bar, tear it up, go to the bathroom, wash hands, cleanse, throw it away and see. And I don't think, Howard, that it's a once-off attempt. Mm. Because most of us, or many of us, I think would say, I'm not a writer. What do I know about writing? You're the expert mm. in writing and creating. I loved how you brought up not always about the positive or the negative. I'm a big believer in I've got to make a really hard decision. Go to the pen and paper mm. with a pros mm. and a cons list. Be real. Be honest. Um, the loneliness. Writing to yourself. So I think that's important as well because people sometimes send me their writing and they say, like, what do you think of this? And it's great. Very often it's amazing. But I get the sense that they're not writing it for themselves. They're writing it with an external reader in mind. And the minute you do that, it just lacks the authenticity. And I know that, A, they're not getting a lot out of it, and I'm not getting enough out of it reading it because it's too self-conscious. So you have to write for me. It's for yourself. writing for you, so, being yeah, authentic otherwise, and real. Otherwise, it just becomes... It's what you want to hear, what boring, I'm writing, actually. and it's what Howard yeah, wants to hear, yeah. what Howard wants to think. Mm. No, it's what Ariel feels, where Ariel is at. And like I said, you don't want anybody to find it. It's very therapeutic to tear it up. Yeah. Tear it up, throw it away. Incredible. Love that idea.